I think the biggest legacy of Shadowhunters is the family that's been created. And in the fact that the show is really about love and about acceptance and found family. With those eight episodes, if you could describe three words, what to expect of those, what would the three words be? Bloody, twisted, and bittersweet. Jonathan. In the flesh. Resurrection brought back my real face. Feels good to be back. Oh, I was hoping you'd do that. I can feel it. It's this darkness. It's growing. You're the main character on uh, Shadowhunters, which was based on the book, of course, and the TV show. Um, big shoes to fill to start that kind of show with that amount of fans? Absolutely, 100%. It's what makes me so grateful about the Shadowhunters fandom is that they have been so welcoming from day one. It's really been amazing to see the, the, the warm welcome the fans have given us and they're willing us to come along on this journey and with this story, you know, not only with Lily Collins playing Clary in the movie, but also with the, the pre-existing book fandom. I was really nervous for the announcement to happen. And actually, when I found out that I was cast 10 minutes before it was announced on Twitter, Wow. Yeah. And so I had 10 minutes of seeing who is Clary trending and all of this stuff happening of going, oh, they're all going to know in 10 minutes. And what are they going to say? Yeah. And I had no idea. But from day one, it's been just the absolute warmest welcome. So the biggest thank you to all of the Shadowhunters fans out there. And uh, you play Clary. What are the main differences and uh, similarities between your, your yourself and your character? You know, what's so interesting is that Clary is incredibly similar to who I am as a person. She's probably the closest to any character I've ever played. So it, it, it it's almost more difficult because when you are different from a character, you can sort of look at it objectively and figure out how they work. But when they're so similar to who, who you are, you, you can never 100% understand what makes you, you. So um, it's, it's a lot of relying on instinct and it's been just the best journey getting to know her. Uh, I believe we have only about eight episodes left to watch. Yeah, just about. Yeah, um, so how was it, what was it like to film that final scene? Because I imagine you filmed everything by now, or are I you still, yeah, 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 okay. shot everything. You know, we got to shoot the series finale, so we found out we were canceled, and then we went back and shot two more episodes yeah. to wrap up the whole story. And shooting that was sort of the, the best closure I could have gotten with the show, because we, we weren't making the show to, to get picked up for another season. We weren't making the show for anything but us for the story and for the fans. And it was amazing to get to see everyone on, you know, from props to wardrobe to our camera department to everyone really have a sense of artistry with it because we had the freedom to do whatever we wanted and just create the story in the way that we wanted to finish it for the fans, for these characters and for this world we've created. And it was so wonderful. And it gave me a chance to look at everything from 50,000 feet as well and realize what a life-changing experience it has been. Um, but I'll never forget the last scene that I did because I, I had to walk away out this doorway. And I turned the corner. You know, most of the cast and everything, it just happened to be a scene that pretty much everyone was in. They were all in this room, in the scene. I was looking at all of them and I turned around and I walked out the door. And there's our producer and our assistant director and a bunch of our office staff with carts of champagne coming in. They didn't realize we were still shooting and they wanted to be ready for the champagne toast. They're coming in, they're going, oh no, we didn't realize you guys were still shooting. But they were just right there ready. And that that shows you what the family of Shadowhunters is. We were all there with each other till the bitter end. And we had the rat party. You know, the, we ransacked the props room and ran around and played with everything. And you know, it's, it's one of these things where we really did give it the proper send off. And so it felt okay moving on. It still feels as though I've lost a limb sometimes, but it's okay moving on because we have that family and it's it's solid. Did you keep any of the props just because you mentioned playing with it? Well, they did allow me to. I didn't steal anything. I didn't take anything that wasn't given to me, I swear. I, I have too much of a guilty conscience. But they did give me a set of Clary's Stelle. I did get a set of Clary's daggers and Clary's Stelle and, and a few pieces of wardrobe. Um, so I, I will always have those with me. And because they're the ones I actually used in the show, it's uh, it's it's really great. Yeah. Of course, because they're such a great fandom, what do you hope the people will take from it, from the entire show, but maybe also the final episodes and saying goodbye? You know, a lot of people are talking about the legacy of Shadowhunters and what, it, what it's going to mean moving forward. And I think the biggest 
legacy of Shadowhunters is the family that's been created and in the fact that the show is really about love and about acceptance and found family and and that will never go away. You know, the Shadow fam that's been created, it's been such a privilege to watch it grow and to, to be a small part of all of these people and these artists and these, you know, friendships that have been formed and, and people that are finding their voice and finding themselves through the show and through these characters. Um, but just because the show will not have any more, more episodes doesn't mean that that has to end. The Shadow fam will continue to grow. The Shadow fam will continue to exist as this beautiful little positive space, both in life and on the internet, for people to go and, and feel as though no matter who or what they are, they have a place that they can be loved. Uh, and of course, you're now seen in Arrow. Yeah going from one kick-ass role to another. Did you, you thought like, if I can't do it on show Shadowhunters, I'll, I'll do it somewhere else. Right? Yeah, no, actually that was completely unintentional, to be honest. Actually, when I was finishing up Shadowhunters, I was so sad because I've done so much training for it that I was going, oh man, my next job, I'm not gonna have to train as much or be, you know, as intense about it. And cut to, I'm now on Arrow playing Stephen Amell's daughter where they're going, hey, so we want you to have all the intellect of Felicity, but the physical brutality and strength of Oliver. Okay. No pressure. No pressure. I, so I went, so when do I have to do the salmon ladder? Cause I need a heads up before I have to do that. <laughs> Can you do that? No, <laughs> not yet, but I'm getting there. Uh, thank goodness they haven't asked me to do that yet. But it's it's been a lot of fun to, to continue my training and to keep you know building my skill set in that way but again the Arrow family has just welcomed me with open arms and I'm, I'm oh so grateful. Because you play such strong female characters is that something you take with you as a like a role model to younger people while you play it? Well I would I would hope so I mean I, I try to put forth the best example I possibly can I get to do what I love for a living and through that it gives me a bit of a voice and I, I intend to not waste that you know I like to use it for, for something good but something that these girls these characters have taught me is that you know I've always been a tiny human and I never thought I could be a strong human as well and that's something that these characters have shown me is not the case you know I I have grown in in my strength and in my abilities and and so have these characters and it's it's been really kind of incredible and mind-blowing of course it was kind of a big revelation what the background of your character is oh, yeah. who, whose daughter you were did you know that going in not when I auditioned. They were fake sides and all of that for a character that was a rookie cop who kind of resented vigilantes and had a dark past that she was trying to work through. That was basically the character description and they had some scenes that they created. Um, and then after I booked the part, I started doing research on, you know, what training rookie cops go through and things like this to kind of get in that mindset. And then I get a call from Beth Schwartz, who's the showrunner, and she goes, hey, congratulations, we're so happy to have you on the show. Um, by the way, you, everything you know is a lie. You're Oliver and Felicity's daughter. Okay, great, have fun. And I'm going, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. I'm who now? And because I knew immediately, you know, through all of the, the Malik press and things that have happened, how beloved that ship is and how much people care about Elicity and, and how much they've kind of built up that relationship over seven years and I'm going I have to be the product of that so I knew what a responsibility it was and then I proceeded to watch all seven seasons of the show or six at the time seasons of the show just to do as much research as I could because I, I respect Stephen and Emily so much for what they built and I just want to do justice by that. Any of the future for your kind of character? Like, are you returning next season? Do you have uh, anything you can say about that? I don't know about next season. I am in most of the rest of this season. Um, and it's really neat. You get to see a lot more of her backstory. You saw it in, in episode 16 when we had the full flash forward. But you get to see, now that she's reestablished with her family or is getting more so, you see the, the facade crack a little bit. And you see a bit of her softer side. You see bits of... of who she actually is and her vulnerability is coming through, which is a really nice facet to a character that's been so hard asked for the, for the first bit. And a final question, a question from our readers. They ask if you could pick any Marvel or DC character and superhero power, whatever, uh, what would it be? Um, I will take anything in the Marvel DC universe. I'll just put that out there. I, I would love to join those worlds in any way. Um, but I think as far as powers go, I'd either want the power to heal because I'm a very clumsy human and I... You could use that for yourself. could use it. But also when you're in battle and you're fighting other forces that are going to end the world, if somebody gets, you know, stabbed or, you know, twists an ankle, you need to fix them so they can get back out there. Very smart. Absolutely. Also, I love to travel, clearly, the fact that I'm here. Um, teleportation would be really valuable 
I would want that one. Right, yeah. So there you go. Okay. And uh, enjoy the rest of the convention. Thank you so much. Thank you.